John here. So I just came back from England, been there a week visiting my wife's family. And every time you have a break like that, you feel kind of stiff when you come back, at least I do. But this time I tried a new approach where I focus a lot on the left hand. And that seemed to speed up my sort of technique recovery when I came back. So I wouldn't say that now on day two I'm at 100%, but I'm definitely further on in to my normal technique than I would usually be. So I'm just gonna share the exercise that I did and see if it can help you as well. And I just think this is a generally good exercise anyway to get your timing together in the left hand, which of course will help your legato as well as your anything you do with picking as well. So we're gonna use this approach where you do all hammers and I've seen Tom Quayle talk about this, Rick Graham, Guthrie Govan, so we're in good company. And I'm also gonna link uh, another video where I've talked about this sort of approach before, so we don't need to go into all the technical details. Uh, and the approach that I used for this one was the systematic approach because I want to make sure that I really hit all the combinations, but you can apply this to scales as well, of course. When you do this kind of exercise or this kind of work, it's good to mute the strings. You don't have to worry about that. And generally I use, you know, a sock, clean one, or a cloth, or if you have this groove gear stuff that I don't use, you can use that. But for now, I'm just gonna use my hand like this. So I'm basically just muting so I don't get any extraneous noise, so I can focus on the actual left hand technique. So basically all hammers is exactly that, it's all hammer-ons. So I'm going to demonstrate this from the 7th fret, and obviously you have link to the tabs as well, it's available on my Patreon, but it's fairly easy once you get to know the pattern. So we're going to start with 1, 2, 3, and like I said, 7th fret, one finger per fret. So we're going to do this groups of 4. So first of all, think of this fingering as sort of a scale. So you just go one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, and so on. And then if you number the notes, you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And once you get to that point, you're gonna know the sequence. And then you just go up four notes from each starting point. So you're gonna go one, two, three, four, and you go back to the second note, two, three, four, one, I'm oh, sorry, two, three, four, five, and then you have uh, from the third note, three, four, five, six. And once you've done that, the whole shape will repeat starting on the A string instead. So we got. And like I said, it's all hammer ons here. There's no pull offs. And you're gonna see that when you turn this around, it's way more difficult. But you still get some of these difficult ones within this, this one. And what I'm talking about here is that going from left to right is fine, but because whatever you do with this finger doesn't really matter, but going from right to left, it really matters with the timing, because if you get this finger down too early, nothing's gonna happen. If you get it down too late, you're gonna get some other noise. You need, really need to nail the timing. But that's exactly the same timing you need to have when you pick it anyway. So if you pick this, you still need to get the finger out of the way exactly in time for it to sound like a clear note. All right, so I'm not gonna play through all these, but I'm just gonna give you a little idea of it. So if I do one, two, three again. You get the idea, uh, you continue on until you get to... Right? And once you've done that, you can pause if you want, because again, it's not about playing this uh, all in one go if you don't want, but if you want to go on without pausing, you can just slide up to that note. So that's sort of the, the, the only note we're not gonna hammer. So you go like that, and then a half step up, and then you're go, gonna go down instead. So descending is gonna be the same idea. You just go down, one, two, three, four, and then two, three, four, five, three, four, five, six. So even though we go backwards here, you can still think of it as one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and so on, right? And then you just go down, one, two, three, four, two, three, four, five, three, four, five, six, and then you restart on the B string.
Now this is way trickier, so just focus on the timings. It's good to do this with a metronome actually, and you know, maybe just try it with eighth notes at 60 to 80 BPM, so just go. So what you don't want to do here is overdo the, do anything like that. You try to keep it as normal as possible. And what I mean by normal is how would you do it when you pick it? So that's actually one thing you can try. If you go like uh, between just uh, that, for example. There should be very little difference uh, when you, whether you pick it or whether you do all hammer-ons. So this really develops your timing, but also the sort of right light touch you want when you play normal legato. Where you don't want to dig in too much because then it's going to be very difficult to get it up to any type of speed. Uh, so. Basically you do that with one, two, three, like we did, and then the reverse. Then you'd go through the, the remaining three fingerings, which would be one, two, four. And again, you continue on up, move up a half step. Same thing with that one, then you do one, three, four. Move up. And then finally you do no one's favorite, two, three, four. And this one backward is really not fun. But again, it's all about getting the timing right. So go slow and if you find that you, you get a no sound or a tie, you know, just a sort of a bad attack, don't try to overcompensate by smacking the string. Instead, try to focus on the timing. So that's the key here. So don't, don't miss out on that. So that's basically what I have been doing now for a couple of days with my left hand. And I haven't done it that much. I've maybe done it, you know, a couple of times in a few different positions. Uh, and a, a nice variation to this as well is to do it with the dotted rhythms. And I'm gonna do a super quick explanation of dotted rhythms here. Basically, you just want to go long and then a short note and then a long note. So you get this bop, 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 bop type of effect, but you want to have a, quite a big, uh, should be a, quite a big difference between the long and the short. So, so you don't want to go like that. You want to go bum, 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 bum. And so on. And then you turn that around and do short long. So you go. And you do exactly the same combinations again. So that's a really good uh, variation on this. And, and that I really could feel that in my left hand that it sort of really woke up by doing that. So I'm going to link to that as well here on the screen so you can check that video out. So you get a more thorough understanding of it. And obviously that practice technique is very old. It's used for piano and violin, uh, but there's a ton of <laughs> piano and violin virtuosos that, you know, uh, they've used it a lot. So, and you'll see in, in my video as well, where this uh, uh, short interview with Itzhak Perlman and that guy is just a beast. So it's a very legit practice technique. Now you might wonder, well, that's the left hand. What did you do for your right hand? Uh, I did mostly the right hand workout that I shared a few days ago, so I'm going to link to that as well so you can check that out. But that really helped my right hand to sort of get back into the swing of things. Like I said, I'm not 100% yet, but it's only been a couple of days and I feel way better than I usually do. Usually it takes, you know, three, four, five days of, you know, few hours a day of practice before I feel like I'm sort of back where I'm used to being. So give this a try. If you have any questions, just let me know below in the comments. Otherwise, good luck and see you in the next one. Back in the day, I used to have real issues with fast alternate picking when it came to two notes per string. I was fine with three notes per string, but the two notes per string thing was a bit harder to, to crack. 
So if you struggle with fast alternate picking as well, and you don't know what to practice or for how long, I've created the perfect solution for you in the form of the Pentatonic Picking Power Book. So in this book, you'll find a daily workout that will not only help your pentatonic picking, but will also upgrade your overall alternate picking technique. So it contains basically the same exercises I used myself to develop my picking abilities, as well as numerous students over the years that I've given the same exercise to with great results. So I know these exercises work as long as you put in the work. So it's not a quick solution or quick fix. It will still take a lot of work, but at least you have a very easy to follow routine. So if you're up for a big alternate picking upgrade in 2024, I cannot think of a better start. It's nine bucks and I think it's very underpriced, but I did it that way just so as many people as possible could be helped by this. So check that out.